I was just listening to the new record. Well, the re reversion, the new version that you did for the record, um, originally titled uh, "We Are Warrior," and then now "We Are Warrior." So um, I had a song called "Warrior." And I just re-recorded it and retitled it to We Are Warriors in dedication to all the frontline workers who are out there right now, um, risking their lives to keep us all safe and holding the world together right now. I just had this idea because I had my tour, my world tour booked. We were ready to go. The whole tour got canceled. You know, everything's going on right now, which is crazy. We've never experienced anything like this with the virus. Um, you know, I'm sitting at home like, what can I do? Is there anything I can do? So uh, everyone's being out, out in the world who's keeping us safe and working so hard. Everyone's being referred to as warriors right now. Yeah. And they are. They are the true heroes, the true warriors. Um, you know, we're just like kind of being asked to like stay at home and that's sort of like our part, but I wanted to do a little bit more. So of course, you know, naturally it was like, okay, I want to re-record this song and I'm putting together a music video right now with a bunch of um, uh, images from like people out there working and we asked fans to like take video and send it in of like, anyone that they know who's had to be a warrior right now or if it's them so we've got like all this moving footage of like hospital workers holding up signs saying like we are warriors and like we're putting together this really beautiful video right now um so my hope i just wanted to do it to show my gratitude towards like everyone say a huge thank you to everyone who's had to really step it up right now. And it's been such an amazing thing to see everyone coming together and like d doing their part and like all the essential workers from like, just like the people in the grocery stores. Like that was like my main freak out. I was like, what am I gonna do about food? Because like, I have to eat really healthy and like keep myself like in like a good place with my health because right. you know, I've gone through like Lyme disease before. And so like literally like, the grocery store workers they're like huge warriors right now and like of course like all the hospital workers the doctors everybody but i want to put out a song to show them they are appreciated because they are the true warriors knowing again like you had mentioned you need to keep your health up to tip top where it needs to be battling with what you battled with. Um, does that bring you closer during a time like this to people that are on those front lines and people who might not have the best health? So it's like you, your heart, because you didn't just make a new song and redo this, rework the song. You're not shooting a new video. You're also helping with PPE. I see the Project Hope. There's so a lot. Yeah, the proceeds from the song will go to um, the Avril Lavigne Foundation. We've partnered with Project Hope, and they are getting PPE uh, to medical people all around the world. They've done, like, really ama amazing um, work. Like, Project Hope, we're giving USA PPE to people in China Oh, they, they were the first ones on the ground in China to help stop the spread of COVID-19. So I wanted to partner with them just because of the work that they're doing for COVID-19. Um, and so the proceeds of the song go towards that. Absolutely. But I feel like you really, really, this is something that you're very passionate about as well. I think we all are as humans, like you said, this is something new to us. Mm hmm um, but but we do appreciate what you're doing because anytime that anyone can get in there and help out, it's 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 a huge change for the net, the future. Yeah, and it's been great seeing like just like all the musicians kind of like come together. Um, I just recorded uh, a version of "Lean on Me" um, with a producer, John Levine, with a bunch of with like 25 other Canadians with Justin Bieber, Brian Adams, Sarah McLaughlin. Michael Buble from the Canadian Red Cross. So it's really nice when people can come together and, you know, the musicians, we can like use our music and, and like just try to encourage, you know, lift people up, lift spirits, um, encourage people and raise, you know, money for funds and stuff. Absolutely. And a fellow Canadian, which by the way, tell me if I'm right about this, 
finding out Justin Bieber and you are 12 cousins? Yeah. <laughs> what was that thing that came out? It was, um, what are those things? Ancestry. Like Ancestry.com or whatever. <laughs> yeah, so apparently, um, yeah, Justin had Instagrammed that we were related and Ryan Gosling. And it's funny because Justin and I are both from Ontario in Canada. So we grew up in the same area. I mean, I would say like, oh, I don't really know if it's true. But the thing is, it's like I read the down through the different. <laughs> My nail came off. <laughs> <laughs> Do it yourself. <laughs> I'm like sitting here. Oh, I, look did, I did. Yeah. I have an idea. Hold a whole, that's a whole other thing. I haven't, I don't even have a pedicure on my toes right now. And I'm actually okay with it. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> with the, Justin Bieber had posted on his Instagram that we were related, Brian Gosling through the, in, what's it called? The ancestry, yeah. The ancestral thing, test. And, like, at first I was like, yeah, I don't really know. But then I started reading through all the 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 names and like literally like my grandfather's name was on there and like my dad and like it went up to like the other one like it was like three lists of the names I was like oh my god those are actually accurate so I think it's true that's insane mm -hmm. you just never know especially since you said you're from the same area um have you guys spoken on the phone have you talked to each other I know you did the uh Bill Withers you know together with the other artists but have you talked to him too because again health wise he's also battling with well he has his own battle right now with Lyme disease as well yes um I did reach out to Justin um when I heard that he had you know when he came out that he had Lyme disease just because I wanted to like make sure that like you know I was there for him if he needed any help of anything or resources um uh Sadly, his tour got canceled, his world tour and my world tour, both at the same time. I can't speak for him, but obviously that's a good sign if he's going on tour so and putting out new music. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, with, with Warrior, the song that I initially wrote, it was about my ha health battle with Lyme disease. And... So to be bringing it back up and re-recording it now with everything that's like going on in the world with this virus, it's, um, you know, music's always been really str uh, strong and powerful and healing for me. So it feels good to, to get into the studio and to like re-record it. Um, when I was re-recording it in my heart, I was just like thinking about all the medical workers and like what they're doing for us right now and them in the hospitals working and putting their lives at risk to protect yeah. us and it was like a really powerful like experience and you know i'm just like so grateful for them and as far as like me and my health goes like of course with like having lyme disease and stuff like that and overcoming it you know it's like one of those things i have to stay on top of my health i am at a higher risk so i'm definitely like staying in and doing whatever a lot of people are doing, just wiping down boxes, like no one's coming in the house. There's three of us who are in quarantine together, um, you know, and trying to make the best of it all, keeping creative, writing songs. Um, are you with your family right now? How's the quarantine life holding up? Who are you with? I'm with my quarantine family. I'm with two of my friends. It's just been the three of us the whole time. Um, and um just like a lot of cooking and cleaning and and like like working on my music and stuff I like to cook paint and write songs so yeah staying busy definitely um knowing that you are keeping up with your health making sure you're taking care of yourself as well as everyone else again thank you for being so open especially with the song and donating um but knowing that this was that moment you were going back on that world tour and it was going to be a big kickoff for you, especially everything that's been going on in your life personally. Um, how are we going to connect with the fans still? Um, I, obviously you said you're still recording music, but how will we get that out there? Will you still do something live or? So during this quarantine for me to continue to connect with the fans, um, I've 
already shot two videos in my backyard on an iPhone. I've re-recorded Warrior, changed it to We Are Warriors um, for the fight against COVID-19 at my house. I recorded Lean On Me at the house, a compilation song. Um, and um, I did my first live stream like performance from my foyer at the house. <laughs> And I plan to do some more of those. And I think for me, like, okay, now it's time to like, just be more open on social media and use it more. Like, um, try to not be shy um, and just like let people in. I, I'm like kind of like a private person. So like, it's like, with me, social media has been like just a lot about the music, but that's what I was saying to you earlier. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> Maybe it's time to show people how I do the black eyeliner after all these years. Hey, why not? We're sharing these moments of our nails and everything else. You might as well. Exactly. Well, if you want to start being open, we could go here uh, for a second. This is a good segue to ask you if one of your songs you could pick right now represented your love life or your quarantine or whatever, because I'm here by myself, so I don't really have one. But what's yours? I'm trying to think. <laughs> um, we, could, we could say, what the hell? <laughs> All my life I've been good, but now... I think of what the hell. <laughs> it's funky and fun. And Well, did you know, I'm sure you did, that uh, we do this thing. I mean, obviously, I've talked to you about music before. I talked to you last year at one of the events. Um, I usually get a chance to talk to you once or twice a year, so it's cool. This is our, like, reunion again. Um, we do this thing called Anatomy of a Song, and we chose Skater Boy, of course. Would you want to go through a couple of like little things with us to break it down? Because it came out almost 18 years ago, by the way. Sure. And you look like you're 18. <laughs> <by this>. <laughs> <laughs> the youth. <laughs> okay. So knowing what it was, you kind of flipped it on us. The skater boy being yourself in this particular song, right? And it looked fun. The video was amazing, colorful, lots happening. And I'm sure like some, one of the best times of your life shooting that yeah. and, and performing it. But where did that come from for you? So let's see. I wrote skater boy when I was 16. Okay. And I was in California with Lauren Christie in this group called The Matrix, and they were producing the record. And Lauren and I were sitting around, and I was just talking to her about my obsession with skateboarding, and that the only guys that I really was into were skaters. And just like a funny little thing, like if a guy had skate shoes on, like I'd be like, oh yeah, it's cool. Like, I don't know. I don't have a shoe fetish, but like. <laughs> That was a good conversation. So we kind of took it back to like um, high school and the different like cliques and like the different groups. You've got like skates, punks, jocks, um, the preps. And it was sort of, it's sort of just like based around like my experience. Like the song is a story. And like, I was kind of like in the skater group at one point in high school, like right before I left, right before I dropped out. And then, um, Basically, you know, the story is sort of about missed opportunity and living up to society's expectations. You've got the skater boy, you've got the preppy ballet girl. He's into her. She's too worried about what her friends will think. She, down the road, um, I get the skater boy. Um, and then she, five years from now, she sits at home feeding the baby. She's all alone. She has a realization. She realizes that she missed out. She was really in love with him. And so the kind of the message in the song, in the, the song is just about, you know, not worrying about what other people think and society and like listening to yourself and being your authentic self. Was there one specific person it was about or just that whole experience of your time during that? Um, it was influenced by like my high school experience. Like I wouldn't say the first year I was skateboarding, probably like the second year I'd like start wearing like baggy pants, black eyeliner, was like 
in skateboarding clothes and hanging out with like a lot of skaters. Truly, I did skateboard down the hallway. Um, <laughs> and like, like that was like my lifestyle. And I hung out with like all like guys, a lot of guys that skateboarded. Um, not one guy in particular, but there were a couple guys that I did have crushes on. Um, was there a moment during sh the shooting of that music video that something crazy happened or you remember like thinking, wow, this is all coming to fruition. Like, this is what I wanted. It's here. It was cool because we shut down downtown LA. I got to stand up on a car. I got to smash a guitar and I had, um, my brother is in one of the scenes with me driving a car through the street. I put in complicated and skater boy, my brother and sister make cameos. Because it was a big deal. I was shooting. I was coming out to LA to shoot a music video. So my, I brought my brother and sister down. Um, I know you got to get out of here. So I'll let you enjoy the rest of your day. But quickly, um, I just bought a longboard. I've skateboarded before, like when I was younger. Longboard is super harder right now for me than the skateboard. Do you still skateboard, number one? And number two, the if you could wrap your fashion back then into one word, what would it be? <laughs> what would it be? I mean, I guess it was like, I was wearing like a lot of Dickies and Converse and Doc Martens and Vans. And it was like kind of like a surf skate, like tomboy tie, necktie, kind of vintage tee vibe. Um, do I still skateboard? Yes, I have skateboards in my, by my front door right now. And I skateboard down the street. Am I doing tricks? Nope, because when I have a world tour, I don't want to mess with like breaking an angle or anything. Um, I ride boards and they're fun and scooter and um, uh, do a little bit of biking and rollerblading. Staying busy, girl. I can't wait to see the eyeliner video, okay? Make sure you tag me so I know where to find it. Okay. <laughs>